a, a manuscript called the Manuscript Sacramentary of Gelone. It's one of our priests in, Singapore, in the Philippines who he saw this, I think, on the Google image, you know. He saw this old, but, and then I did a research on this, and it's fantastic. So you'll see here, the date of that manuscript is 790, all right? But, so, let's start from St. Pius V. We will look at the legal aspect of quo primum later on, but this is how it starts. From the very first. So the word quo primum in English means from the very first. Up from the very first of our, upon our elevation to the chief apostleship, we gladly turn our mind and energies and directed all our thoughts to those matters which concern the preservation of a pure liturgy. And we strove with God's help by every means in our power to accomplish this purpose. The Pope realized the most important thing is how to worship God. Let's do it right. In order that the Missal and Breviary may be in perfect harmony, the way they pray in the monastery, as the Breviary, and the way we pray in the, in the churches, in the Mass, as fitting and proper, for it's most becoming, it is most becoming that there be in the church only one appropriate manner of reciting the Psalms and only one right for the celebration of Mass, we deemed it necessary to give our immediate attention to what still remained to be done. Why do we say remain? after the Council of Trent. This is about five years after the Council of Trent. Viz, that is, the re-editing of the Missal as soon as possible. So we need, don't forget, Luther's 1517. We are talking about 1567. So 50 years after Luther, Europe is shaken by Protestantism. And Catholicism is this is pretty weakened in many areas, especially in worship. Hence, so we need to sort out the missile. We decided, so what are we going to do? Not like, like Paul VI, who said he created a missile. Pius V said, this is like an antique piece of furniture which has been painted and varnished so many times. Let's strip all the paint and the varnish and go back to the original colors and then we'll have it the way it was intended. So he gathered together a group of learned men of our selection. They very carefully collated all their work with the ancient codices. Codices are the, the manuscript, a codex, singular, codices, plural in our Vatican library, and with reliable, preserved, or amended codices from elsewhere. So all the monasteries of Europe, they send monks to look at all the libraries. What's your oldest sacramentary, your oldest manuscript? Besides this, these men consulted the works of ancient and approved authors concerning these same rites, and thus they have restored. The key word is restored. They remove all the paint and all the varnish and have restore this treasure to the original form and rights of the fathers. So, like a bridge, follow me. We have St. Pius V. He said his goal, his goal was to go back to the previous clear document of the Mass. It's like if you're lost, you're walking somewhere or you're driving, and all of a sudden you're lost, lost, in no GPS, you're going to backtrack to the last known place. And then you say, well, I turned left, I should have gone right. Yeah, this, yeah I know this building, okay, yeah. That building, I, I know this is right. But now, okay, let's see. So, St. Pius V in 1570, so we need to clean the missile. Now they got together, like, on, on, in their library, they have, I don't know, dozens, if not hundreds, of 
documents from all the centuries, and they're going to compare them. And what is identical in all of them, that will be it. But his goal was to find the Mass as at the time of St. Gregory the Great, because that was the last solid foundation. 900 years ago, how did they say? We're talking about essentially the canon of the Mass. Okay? The offertory prayers as we have them came a little bit later. <clears throat> but the canon of the Mass. So here we have the three sacramentaries, Leonine, Gelasius, and Gregorian. So, and what we have here, the sacramentary of Gelone is a Gelasian sacramentary. Here is, uh, so it's been dated about 790. And here's the link where you can find it online. I can give you these slides if you're interested later on. <clears throat> so, it was a monastery. Uh, so, so back in the 790s, they analyze the writings that you will see, and they said, when they talk about a minuscule, minuscule is also the, the kind of manuscript and the kind of writings. And so you have it here, for example, here. So there's about 270 pages remaining. It's the liturgy of the Merovian, Merovingian church, of Charlemagne era, but just before Charlemagne, actually. Uh, and a combination of Roman, Gallican is French, Gaul is French. So Gallican writes, so it's a mixed Gelasian text. And by the, 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 the script, they say it's before, it's proven, it's before 800. Because Charlemagne made some reforms in the writing, the style of writing as well. So you can see here, it's the, uh, yeah. Merovingian is before Charlemagne. Uh, Carolingian is Charlemagne. Okay. Uh, okay. We move on here. Saint William of Gelone. So <clears throat> Guillaume d'Orange, uh, known in French. Okay. Let's move on. But I don't want to. I just want to show you a little bit here of uh, what we have. I just you can download page by page. By the way, it's better, you have a, a better quality when you do it page by page than if you do the whole thing at once. So I just downloaded a few of these pages. Now it's not a missile like you have your missile, because you have for 140 pages, you just have the pre, the uh, the collect, the secreta, and the post communion of all the Sundays of the year. Then at 143, we start with the preface. You have the preface, the canon, and communion. And then other things, there's readings, there's different uh, communicantes or hankiji or different prefaces. And then you have the Easter, 180 Easter vigils. 230, you have uh, like a ritual, the blessing, which we still use, by the way. Then at the end, 262, we have a calendar. It's very interesting because you'll see in a moment uh, 271, we have the feast in August, and we find out that the Feast of the Assumption in 790 was on August 15. So even the dates of a lot of our feasts are traditional. So the calendar uh, conveys a tradition as well. Okay, So here's the cover of the book. Here's the flyleaf inside. So it's page one, recto and verso, front and back. Okay, so page one, recto, page one, uh, so verso, recto, page two. Okay, so and then we come to page one, verso. Here it is. Okay, so to have a closer look, and uh, you can see it's very much if you know the Book of Kells, if you know. The Irish way of writing, 
it's very much in the style as well. We find some features of the Irish calligraphy. And uh, <coughs> we have here L-I-B, Liber, the book, Sa Cramen, so S-A, but there's a C here on the A, a little R, A, Sacra, Ment. Uh, these accents shows that there's an abbreviation. There's an O, Sacramentorum, Book of the Sacrament. Now, in Vigilia, in the vigil of uh, Nati, Nat, the Nativity of our Lord, Domini Jesu Christi, at the ad, AD, Sancta, S C A, the two dots, here's an abbreviation, Sancta, Holy, Mary, that's St. Mary Major in Rome. The Mass is said in front of the relics of the crib. You will have that in your missal if you look the station, just before the Mass, station at. The Pope would go and say Mass there. And here you have the prayer. If you look at December 24th, we have exactly the same prayer. And uh, so, this is page one. We start, they start with uh, the vigil of Christmas, okay? So here we have page two, recto. So you have uh, introit, sec scr, secreta at the offertory. And you have also the post-communion. And this goes on like this. Just the three prayers, 400 pages. And then we go on to page two. Okay. And notice the writing because at the end of the book, the writing changes. And then we come to 142. Same thing. We have the three prayers. 142 verso, the back page. 142 recto. And all of a sudden, here, so we have the different prayers, secreta, in the post-communion, and all of a sudden, incipiunt begins, canon. What is interesting is there's, a, there's Latin letters and Greek letters. There's a Greek O, canon. And then you have sursum corda, response, abe musa dominum. Gratias agamus domino deo nostro, dignum et justum est. And here's a elaborate, vere dignum et justum est, tecum et salutare, nos divi semper adibitur. So we have the beginning of the canon. Here's a closer view. Okay? That's what you said this morning. Okay? They were starting the preface exactly like we do, or we do exactly like they did. Okay? But it shows, you know, this is already, uh, well, it's 790. We're talking about 1,300 years, uh, 1,220 years, okay? We move on. After, so here we have the, uh, the next page, 143 verso. Let's have a close-up, okay? All the angels here, okay? Verquem majestatem tuam laudan angelii absolvant. Dominationes, Cheri Celorunque Jesu Christ. Ut admiti iubeas de precamu supplici confessioni dicentes, Sanctus SCS, with the two dots. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Dominus Deus Sabaot. So we have a mix of Latin and Greek letters. Pleni sunt Cheri et Terra. Caeli, in Greek and Latin. Gloria tua, Gloria, that is Greek here. Hosanna. In excelsis, benedictus qui venit nomine domini, hosanna in excelsis. And notice that in your missal, the T at the beginning of the canon is usually a crucifix. There's always a cross at the beginning. And here we have the cross, which is the cross here. The cross is the T, te igitur, clementissime pater, per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum, dominum nostrum sublices rogamus acutimus, it's exactly the prayers that we said this morning, the prayers of the canon. We come to the digital continues, and then uh, in primis, commemento, the communicantes, we have the list of saints. I have a closer view here. 
Peter, Paul, Andrew, Jake, James, John, and so on. What is interesting, so we have the first popes, Avellini, uh, Lini, Cletus, Clement, G.C. Cornelius, Cipriani, Lorenz, Prisa Gognoni, Set Pauli, Cosme and Damien, uh, Cosme and Damien, Hilary, huh? Martin, Augustine, Gregory, Jerome, Benedict. We don't have them, because now we're in France. This is a Gallican, uh, so see, this is an example of differences. Like over there in France, when they said this mass, they would invoke these great saints because, hey, they're great. Let's put them in the mass. But when St. Pius V, when he gathered all the manuscripts, he realized, say, these ones are not universally invoked, so we'll remove them. They were added later on. Okay? And so on. Okay? We come to the consecration, Hungarian consecration. What is, uh, what is beautiful here, you'll see, we'll have a closer here, okay? That we talk about the Mass, not only the words are, for the canon, as I told you with the, the word this we spoke of, most of the prayers of the canon most likely go back to St. Peter. Certain names of saints obviously were added later on. But as I told you, with, with the, the principle of St. Leo, St. Innocent, 416, he says, keep the traditions. So you have the prayers, but the Mass is not just prayers. The Mass is movements, actions, signs of the cross. And so we have these little red crosses here, which we have here, we still do the signs of the cross at Mass. In the Novus Ordo, they swept all of these. But you can see that these are ancient, ancient. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes there's some abbreviation. Okay. Benedict sit, Frederick Benedict, Achipite, eat and uh, take and eat, all of you, it's of mass. This is my body. Same thing, the, the hunk, there's a famous hunk. This, you know, how do you say in English? This uh, admirable chalice, what's the word in English? Preclarum, okay? This uh, August chalice. Benedict said, here's the words of the consecration. And the mass continues, signs of the cross at the end. Uh, here is the, after the canon, the prayers. Again, we have some saints. Uh, Stephen, uh, Barney, by Ignatius, by Alexander, Marcellino, Petri, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, they're all there, okay? And, uh, and then that's the end. We come then to the, the Our Father. Uh, the, and then it will stop. We have the Libera. Where is the Our Father here? Pedro, Satan, and then. We have the Libera here, the Libera Nos, Domine. And then it comes to, in red, why do we have w words in red? They're called rubrics. What is a rubric? Is an instruction, what do you do here? And it's called a rubric because it is written in red. And red in Latin is ruber. Rubrum. And so, uh, often, it's not always, but here you have these rubric, okay? So that's your, this is, Pax Domini Sit Santa Vobiscum, okay? And the prayers, Quod Ovis and Simus. And here we have the prayers after communion, and after that, it stops, on page 146, and we resume the prayers. It's like, that's it. The Mass is from the preface to the prayers after communion. But that has not changed. We're talking about 790. The prayers of the offertory are not yet elaborate as we have them. They will come about the year 1100, 10, 1100. And I just skip, okay? There's other on Kijitur. You know, we have some special one at Christmas, Epiphany, Holy Week, uh, Pentecost, Easter, Easter Vigil, 
the Easter litany that we sing at Easter Vigil. And uh, let me move on a little bit, okay, uh, which is very interesting here. See, the writing has changed. Okay, maybe it's a few pages that were added later on. That is the short lives of the saints. But I want to show you the calendar. See, August 15. So the, uh, the assumption here. Uh, in, in the Roman liturgy, in the, in, the Roman, in the Roman Empire, they, they, the first day of the month is the, the calendar. The word calendar comes from the calan, calendar which is number one, number one of the month. And so, say the 31st of August, it's not the 31st of August, it's the day before the calend of September. And the 30th, well, it's the second day before the calend of September. The 20, they go backward as we're getting close to. So, this piece of the Assumption is the 18th day of the calendar of September, which is August 15th. Santa Maria Matris Dominus Dios et Christi. So, so the, for example, so in the liturgy, we also have, you know, the, the feasts are part of tradition. And by the way, a manuscript like this will be used by Pope Pius XII in 1950 to prove that at all times, so, such as in France in the 790s, they honored, they believed in the Assumption. So here's a, here's a calendar that uh, shows that they had a Mass for the Assumption. And that's the end, that's the last page, okay? Uh, last folio, last page. It's an extraordinary document uh, it's an extraordinary document that shows that our mass is truly the uh, the mass of you know the, the early centuries. Now, I have given you a piece of paper. You can have a look at it. This is in detail, as detail as possible. When or where do the different parts of the Mass come from? Well, you have here the whole list. It's taken from Don Guéranger, this book by two different books, and Father Lebrun, two great names in history of liturgy. And you can see the origin of uh, some of these prayers of the Mass. Like the Psalm 42 at the beginning of the Mass was said freely. Not every priest would say it, not every bishop. Some would do it, some would not do it. But St. Pius V said, listen, from now on, everybody will do it. The Confiteor, all this, okay, was at the beginning. The intro, it goes back to Pope Celestinus. Kyrie, first century. Gloria, first century. Collect, first century. Epistle. You know, they would just open the Bible, or take, they didn't have a Bible as such, but they, will, they would have pages, <coughs> some text, Epistle of St. Paul, and so on. Gradual Alleluia, the early century, the sequence, like the DS Ray, like the Victima Pascale Laudis at Easter, ninth century, the Gospel. Of course, you might say, the Gospel was not written. How could they read it? Well, at first were the apostles. They could remember. I remember. Here's the story Jesus told us. And he would tell the story, the parable. But they would hear the gospel live by those who heard it. Later on, it was written down. And then their disciples would say, Father Matthew said, this is what Jesus said, listen to this one. And then he would read a passage. Okay, there was the gospel of St. Matthew. The creed at first was the apostles' creed. To the Nicene Creed 425. Now the Mass of the Faithful, from the Offertory onwards, you can see most of the prayers originated in Spain, but imposed in Rome back in the 1100s, 1100s, 1100s. Although 
the rite was there. They would take the bread, they would offer the bread, but maybe in silence, or the priest would say a prayer of his own, but there was no fixed prayer for everybody. And why, it's, why in Rome did they add these prayers? Because 11, so we're talking about the 10 hundreds, was the first Eucharistic heresies. The first heresy, if you turn on the other side of the page, part three, see you have Berengarius in the middle of the, the other page. They were denying the real presence. They were denying that the Mass was a sacrifice. So the Pope said, oh, listen, some people are saying Mass is not a sacrifice. We need to make that clearer. And by the way, in Spain, they, make, they have these beautiful prayers. Why don't we use these prayers and insert them into the Roman liturgy? And that's how it came to be part of the offertory prayers. Okay, go back to the other, to page one. And we have the canon, as we have just seen. Number 20, the preface. Uh, Pope Gelasius wrote many, but uh, the Pelagius already mentioned the main 10 prefaces. Sanctus goes back to the apostles. And then you have the canon, as we have just seen, goes back to certainly the first century. We know another details, number 24, in the Hankiji tour, St. Gregory added a few words to that prayer because there was persecution. And, but see, these are how they, the historian, uh, how the historian evaluate these things. It's like it was front page news. The Pope added half a line to the canons of the Mass. Wow. We've never heard that. You know, he dared touch the canon. Must be really serious. And look at today. I mean, if we had to, I mean, every priest is adding words, his own words, to the canon of the mass. You know, so. But it shows if the pope did that, and if the historian noted that, it shows that nobody touched the canon of the mass. It must have been extremely serious for Pope St. Gregory the Great to add prayers for peace just before the consecration. Okay? So if you go to communion, the Our Fathers from the Apostles. Okay? 37, the Agnus Dei, Pope Sergius I, around 700. And you can see the different centuries there. See 48, the last gospel. It's been said by devotion since the year ni the 900s, but St. Pius V said, from now on, we'll say that every Mass. There's some exceptions, Requiem Mass, when there's processions sometime, but it's going to be part of it. So, our Missal, I don't know if you've been in, in Ireland, when you go to visit a, an old monastery in Ireland, Go to the Rock of Cashel or some of uh, Clonmacnoise, some of the great monasteries in Ireland. You come there and they're, they're ruined monasteries. But you have a map of the monastery and you have different walls in different colors or different chapel or different parts of the monastery or the castle. Or oh, this was the original part are these parts. And this part was added. 200 years later. And this part was added another 300 years later. They have different colors. That's what's left now. The Mass is like this. There's something of all the centuries in that Missal. When you think of just the, the story of these prayers, uh, it's, and so the Mass, you can see it's tradition, but it's also the history of the church. We have something of every century embedded in the Mass, whether it's the name of the saints or whether it is it was inserted at a certain time by a pope 
going back to the apostles or uh, some other circumstances. So the mass is really you know, the treasure of the hist of the apostolicity of the church. One holy, Catholic, and apostolic. So apostolic not just in doctrine and in succession of bishops, but apostolic in the way we pray. So when we start the Mass, it's like if you, you transcend time, you're above time, and you're praying with everybody in all the centuries. You're united with everyone who followed the Mass. It's really the, the sacrifice of the church. It's, it's really it's beautiful. You, you enter into eternity in a way when we come to Mass. 